sorry, it's it's connecting. <laughs> okay. All right, we are on. All right, I'll call this meeting to order. Welcome everyone today, it's Monday, June 29th, 2020. Uh, our regularly scheduled trustee meeting. Mrs. Kraft, if you could please call roll. Mr. Rivers. Here. Mr. Grumbles. Mr. Grumbles. Here. Ms. Taranto. Here. Thank you. Do we have any agenda changes for today? All right, and we'll move to the consent agenda approval. Uh, we have the items here listed in the consent agenda and we just need a unanimous consent to move forward. Is there any items, any questions or any items we'd like to have removed? Hey, Ryan, I, I wanna revisit the roads discussion here at the end of the meeting, if we can, please. That's fine. But as far as the items in the agenda, are you okay with? Yeah, I'm fine with it. I looked through all the backup material. Okay. Trustee Torano, are you okay with the items in the consent agenda? Yes. All right, so that gives us unanimous consent. You don't that need to pass a, you do not need to pass a resolution. No, we just need unanimous consent. There's no resolution. I oh, thought we had a and maybe Andrew can correct me if I'm wrong. I thought we uh, we will sign a resolution number to the approving the minutes and the POs as well as the um, other um, business items. Yeah, we did talk about that, Lisa. So um, we, yeah, I think we should assign it some numbering device, whether it's the next resolution in the sequence or by some other notice. But yeah, I would agree that it need, will need to be assigned some designation. Has this been um, asked of the prosecutor's office if, if it only needs consent? I, I, I it's my understanding every decision by the board, especially spending these kind of dollars that you need a resolution. Yeah, the consent agendas are pretty common practice. Um, do you want a resolution uh, 20254? Andrew, do we want to have a vote or are we okay with just the resolution number? If, if Trustee Taranto would feel better, I don't think there's any harm with approving the consent agenda and then as a resolution and taking the vote on it. Okay. And, Let's, yeah, let's let's uh, let's cross our T's and dot our I's on this just for first first swing here. Yeah, it's not. Sure. I mean, there's specific rules for a trustee board of uh, trustees as, a, and I know that a lot of this was taken from a school board. Um, what they do at, at, as for a school board, that's a little different. Yeah, no, this is all common practice amongst townships. Um, I saw Let Liberty do it. But I also saw him pass a resolution. So just, yeah. All right. Well, Mr. Fine. Rector, Pretty simple. Let's just pass a resolution. I make, or a, make a motion to, to approve, approve it. Approve the consent agenda resolution 20 254. Second. Mr. Rivers? Yes. Mr. Grumbles? Yes. Ms. Taranto? Yes. All right. Thank you. That takes us to zoning, Ms. Bonnie. Yes, uh, so the first item that I have on the agenda is the zoning report. Let me pull that up. <clears throat> so tomorrow um, on Tuesday, June 30th at 7 p.m., the Zoning Commission will be hearing two applications. Sorry. <laughs> um, application number zone-19-02 of Turkey Hill. Um, signage amendment, <laughs> fingers crossed, that will get um, finalized that meeting tomorrow. Um, and the second item on the agenda are the minor amendments uh, to the zoning resolution. And that's in regards to uh, updating our swimming pool standards and um, for outside um, sales of propane takes. Uh, regional planning did hear the, these amendments last week and they recommended approval for that. Um, following that on Tuesday, July 7th at 7 p.m., the Zoning Commission will have its second hearing on the US 23 uh, Commercial Overlay District. And that seems like it's moving forward pretty 
um, smoothly. Um, and then following that on Thursday, July 16th at 6 p.m., uh, the BZ Board of Zoning Appeals will have three applications. Uh, application number BA-20-10, uh, requesting an area variance to construct the basketball court and the um, over at 3739 Avalia Way. Um, following that variance application and conditional use BACU 20-11, um, and that, that's for uh, area variance and conditional use for a new sign um, over at All Shepherds Lutheran Church. And lastly, um, variance and conditional use application BA-CU-20-12, um, seeking uh, to allow uh, variances for condition and conditional use for monument signs over at the new uh, pediatric dentistry on uh, 6284 Pullman Drive. And lastly, on Zoning Commission, Tuesday, July 28th at 7 p.m., um, rezoning application number zone-20-01, uh, the Reserve at North Farms apartment proposal on North Road will be hearing it, hopefully it's second hearing that, that evening. So that's all I have for the zoning report. Um, yeah. You want to continue? Yep. Uh, so the next item I have on the agenda uh, is discussion and possible action on the planning and zoning intern position. Um, we did conduct interviews uh, la la the last two, over the last two weeks, and we did select um, this gentleman here, Brett we Weimkin, as our uh, top candidate for the internship position. And um, after speaking with Mr. King earlier, I will believe we, we would ask for a consensus with the board to move forward with this position and start doing the pre-employment um, requirements prior to officially hiring him. I don't know if the board has any questions or. <laughs> no, that's great. I'm glad uh, to see you get that. Considering so much time went by, I'm glad to yes. see somebody was available. Yes, and, and, and I mean, we're, we're fortunate that oh, I think that oh, there's a lot of students that are very eager <laughs> to start since, you know, on their end too, they haven't had the opportunity to take on an internship because of this pandemic. So I'm happy that we were able to fulfill that now and move forward. Resume looks good, very engaged and active and hardworking, you can see with all yes. the. Uh, the various activities and stays stays very active and um i even like i even like some of the the verbiage i, th I found it creative and and uh, enjoyed reading the resume the sandwich mm -hmm. artist was my favorite one <laughs> and he, you gotta take pride in anything you do right so i thought that right. was a good sign <laughs> yeah and fun fact he he's um the i daughter for the Ohio State mar Marching Band. So that's yeah, four times. <laughs> so, so I think you get unanimous I'm consent sorry. there, Michelle, to move forward. It looks okay. good. Thank you. Should I continue on with the other? Yeah, yes, please. Okay. Um, so the other item on the agenda, um, and I know Andrew has mentioned that we're going to touch base as far as staffing goes later on in the, the meeting, but um, my third item is discussion and possible action on a zoning assistant position. Um, you know, over with some recent changes this past year, um, both Jeff and I have discussed uh, restructuring our department. Um, I, you know, as far as my role goes, I'd like to prioritize a little more on the long range plans as I really don't have time for that right now. And um, we're Jeff and I are completely inundated with calls and email inquiries. Um, and a lot of administrative duties that have to happen that we thought the assistant position could fulfill and help us with that so we can focus on what our, our, our role was really designed for. Um, I think it would be since, you know, in the, in the normal world, I would say half of the call, at least half of the calls and inquiry, in person inquiries we get are zoning related. So having that administrative position uh, in our department, I think will be very valuable um, for us and um, again, can focus on some of our bigger projects. Um, and I wanted to just share, um, I think the timing of this couldn't work out even when it couldn't even be more perfect because, you know, we was, I'd hope for the board could consider approving this position. Um, and then this position would hopefully, or the individual would hopefully start in August or September is my goal. And 
Um, I do believe we're going to have a pretty busy fall season from after having a meeting with economic development earlier today. Um, I think the, the, the 23 plan gets adopted in the next month or so. Um, that's going to come in pretty full force, um, even with the economy shifting, um, as well as Evans Farm. So I think, and those will be two of my bigger projects that I would like to focus on rather than handling, <laughs> you know, several calls and inquiries a day. So, um, Andrea, I don't know if we want to talk any more about this now or wait till later, but just. So I, I think I've had the opportunity one way or another to talk with, with everyone about this. So I, and I, what uh, Michelle's mentioning is there's some opportunities to, to realign in different places and reassign some job duties. So in my discussion, you know, with her and, uh, you know, with Chairman Rivers, because he's the liaison there, I think there's sort of a, there's a firm belief that they could definitely use some more frontline and administrative help. Because um, right now, either that stuff gets handled very piecemeal by the front desk, or um, it gets passed on to uh, Jeff or Michelle to, to, to handle. And that obviously takes takes away from both of their ability to, to do the main things that are in their, their job description. So it did seem like it was an appropriate um, next step in the department to help help them. And I think it's also worth noting that uh, Michelle has taken over, um, Ms. Bonnie's taken over some of Mike McCarthy's duties. And, uh, you know, that was something that we were, we were paying quite, quite a bit before for somebody from outside the office to do. So, you know, her willingness and her ability to step forward and, and, you know, give us coverage on that and do it, um, at a, at a better value for the taxpayers, I, I think is great. But then, you know, she also needs some help to offload some of the things that, uh, that she's been doing. So that's been sort of, I think, my general discussion with her. And I think I've had the opportunity to talk to, to most of the rest of you about it. Um, and I think she has too. So, um, you know, as we sort of talk about staffing in general, I think it's just worth having the discussion and sort of get a general um, consensus that this is the direction that, that we want to move with things. And one of the things, and not to jump too far ahead, is that I did, you know, what, what to sort of do a, a re-review of all our position descriptions um, and sort of figure out where some of these job duties that aren't either well assigned, well described or whatnot and, and sort of tweak those. So this would, I, I think, fall as, as part of that. Michelle did a good job, I think, of drafting uh, a, a basic job description. I think it's very inclusive and, and covers a lot. You know, my, my thought would be before we, um, you know, we can change these kind of job descriptions at any time, but before we roll them out, I'd like the opportunity to, to maybe bounce a couple of them off of our HR consultant and if necessary, um, you know, outside counsel just to make sure we're following best practices and doing, doing whatnot. So, but like I said, she's, she's, uh, Ms. Bonnie has been, you know, I think doing a really good job here of identifying her needs and, and getting the stuff together to move forward. And that the zoning in term was, was part of that conversation as well. Thank you, Andrew, for your work on this and, and, um, Michelle, I really appreciate, uh, your patience and, um, I agree with you on timing, the workload, um, is picked up. I've gotten a few emails from people that are very happy with, um, with, with Jeff's responsiveness and um, speaks to, to the value add he has when he's freed up to do his job. So Andrew and I talked through transition and um, in our continued dialogue that we have week over week is around shifting um, the workload at the director level from a transactional workload to a strategic workload. Mm -hmm. And as long as you're managing day-to-day -day inquiries and calls, um, it's going to detract from your ability to lead and, and run your department um, as effectively as possible. So I'm, I'm supportive of this. Um, the, the part I was waiting to hear Andrew provided, which is with any job description that we approve or present, we need to be um, mindful on the future of kind of the, the, the work that we're doing right now to um, more clearly define roles and, um, and restructure, reorganize, whatever you want to call it, in a way that um, eliminates 
uh, a lot of the gray matter that evolved over time by necessity, just from growth and, and the challenges the township faced where people were just trying to get the job done and stepped in, but it, it sustained to a point where it became uh, normal, if you will. And everyone's talking about it, especially when I started and kind of sat down with all of you. Um, and our job as a board and Andrew's job is really to enact the change necessary to go back to a more you know, strategic model and, and uh, streamline model. So this fits in with that. Um, and I, I personally, I'm supportive of it. And I think, uh, you know, your department is, um, we've put a lot of work into your uh, area of responsibility. And, um, and so I appreciate your, your drive and your resilience. And, um, and so I'm, I'm supportive of this. Great, thank you. Any other thoughts or comments? Uh, it's been a big year for zoning and uh, Sean, I think you've done a great job keeping everything on track. I couldn't agree more. I, the timing works out very well um, with the projects and all that uh, you've got. I think it's been a great, great um, as far as progress. And um, I think we've got a good plan here in place for the remaining six months and rest of the year for 2020. It's great to hear. <laughs> Okay, if you wanna- I have one more item on the agenda. Yep. Um, uh, so the last item is discussion and possible action regarding a nuisance at 4085 East Bluff Drive. Um, I believe the trustees um, uh, as a whole were emailed a couple concerns um, recently. And uh, Jeff, Jeff is here if you have any uh, specific questions on it as he's been involved through most of this process. But I mean, essentially, it's it it, it has been a, a property over the, the last several weeks. It hasn't been maintained. Um, I believe it's under some form of a foreclosure. And I know Andrew King and Jeff Beard have been working kind of closely together on this to see what our next steps are. Um, we believe that we may have gotten some form of a contact uh, from uh, in relation to the owner, and we've asked them to mow it. Um, I haven't been able to look out today, but. Um, from last I've heard, it's still it's still kind of like the conditions that I'm showing you. So unless so so Michelle on the on the foreground, we can see that the grass is equivalent to the background there, uh -huh. and that looks like common property. So I would I would just ask um, if we go inspect it again, just take a general sense of the upkeep of the area. It seems kind of odd that. You know, the impassioned kind of emails, I get it, but um, mm -hmm. I don't know who owns that property. I just want to make sure that we're understanding the full um, area of responsibility for, for this uh, abandoned property. Um, one thing, and I, I was thinking about this over the weekend with Jeff's email about a nuisance or what, what have you. And I know we've had a couple other properties that have kind of lingered with fallen buildings and such. Mm -hmm. You know, I think in these cases, um, understanding the cost implication of us pursuing that uh, is important to vet and, and present in, in those type of emails so that we understand if we step in as a township, what, you know, what our risk and um, financial impact is. But I don't think we should wait um, on things that have aged like this or the fallen buildings or any of that. Um, you know, it kind of goes in line with with what we're trying to do in your department overall and, mm -hmm. as a town, and as a township where, you know, we have to kind of set the expectation that, you know, if you don't take care of your property or if you don't, um, you, you know, do the right things, then then we will, um, you know, we'll, we'll help, we'll step in and help the, the residents and the people that are concerned and, and represent them. And so, I would just say if, if there's no financial implication or no risk um, that's overwhelming, let's go ahead and move forward with that instead of waiting uh, for, for the bank to respond um, mm -hmm. so that that way, if they don't respond, we haven't um, foregone our, 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 you know, a couple of weeks or, or what have you, and we can, we can more, you know, at, be more agile in our, in our response to that and, 
however we get that taken care of. I, I know we have resources to do it, but it, it's, it's not good, obviously. No, and I will say, I mean, we try to work with them as much as possible, but like having this go to the trustee agenda makes it really one of our last options that we've exhausted our efforts in trying to communicate with them. Um, since this has been a consistent complaint, um, we wanted to share this. So uh, I will, and I don't know, Jeff, if you have anything else to chime into, but um, I, I believe we, we are planning on pursuing a lease with a letter by the prosecutor's office if they don't respond. Is that my, our next steps? Um, yeah, this, this started uh, middle of May. Uh, and our first step is to send a violation letter and give them two weeks to correct it. However, that, that letter uh, was returned as undeliverable for some reason. Um, not sure why they didn't deliver the letter, uh, but then the neighbors uh, responded to us and told us that they, they thought it was in foreclosure um, and that nobody was living there. So we sent the second letter and it appears to have been delivered. Um, however, according to the auditor site, there's one individual that owns it. Uh, and the only address listed is the current address at the property here at 48, 4085 East Bluff Drive. Um, so that's our only avenue to try to contact them. Um, and then sp speaking with Andrew, uh, he found that it was going through a foreclosure process through the courts. Um, once we got that, uh, I found the attorney that was representing the loan company. Um, and these pictures on the 24th, I uh, called the attorney and spoke with them. Um, and they were going to reach out to the loan company as the house appears to be abandoned. So they're going to try to get the uh, loan company to go out and change the locks on the doors um, and to mow it. Uh, the property is about an acre. Uh, it's about an acre long. It, it goes quite a ways back. It goes from, from this spot all the way back to Bale Canyon Road. Um, then the, our next step with the trustees would have to go through and get a resolution uh, passed uh, for a 50587 uh, for a nuisance abatement. Um, the prosecutor's office would have to do background research uh, and find all the interested parties associated with this property and all the lien holders. Uh, and then that we would pass the resolution and then we would send a letter to all of those lien holders uh, and interested parties and give them seven days to rectify the issue. Uh, once that seven days was over and nothing was done. Uh, we could either contract with somebody to go in and mow it and clean it up, or we can have township staff do that, uh, depending on which would probably be more, more cost effective uh, for the township. Um, Jeff, do you know who owns the, like this area that Ben mentioned? Um, that's, that's, uh, that's a roundabout. Um, it's a dead end row with a, the roundabout It's in the middle. That has been mowed. Uh, it's just full of weed, so those get really tall every time. Um, the week before that, that was mowed. So okay. um, I think it's just the angle that I took the picture makes it look worse than what it is there in the middle. But I'm not sure if that's the township mows that or not. Yeah, well, I think we might want to look into that more just before pursuing. But um... can we... Um... Um... Can we give you consensus to start, if you're not getting a response or action on this, can we just give you consent to start working on the, I know you need a resolution, but I'd like to at least give you consent if the other board members agree to, to get moving on these um, after a month of impasse or no response or so. And then that way um, we can notify whoever we do contact, we're pursuing a nuisance permit and what the ramifications are there from a cost recovery standpoint for them. And maybe that'll shift their bias towards action a bit more and uh, and get, get moving. Uh, trustee, just if I could just interject a little bit because I've, I've done these before and I'm kind of familiar with how the prosecutor's office has typically looked at these. So I think yes, to answer your question, I think it would be helpful for uh, the zoning department to have that general consensus to bring these things to the board because typically the way the prosecutor's office likes to see these they like to see the, the township send at least one letter you know with giving the person some opportunity to cure it then the prosecutor will sort of send a letter sort of a last chance letter saying hey if you don't do it by such and such time this will be referred to the board 
and then they'll take up a, a, a nuisance resolution. And then once it sort of reaches that point, as as was indicated, the prosecutor's office will will typically just do like a quick search. I mean, it's not, I mean, it's quick, but it can be uh, in depth of who's all the different lien holders and whatnot, because they need to put that into the resolution, make sure everybody gets notice. And then what would come to come to the board is the actual resolution declaring it a nuisance. And once it's declared it a nuisance, then I believe as, as, a, as a Jeff mentioned within seven days, after seven days, the board could then go out and mow it. And the way that, to, to go back to your earlier question, the way this ultimately gets paid for, and part of the reason I have the prosecutor's office involved is helpful, is that the cost of the mowing gets assessed back to the property on the tax duplicate as a lien so when whenever the property is sold or whatever we would then get, recover the lien i recall there was a little bit of sort of juggling that went involved when they were sort of this far down the foreclosure process because when i pulled the docket it looked like it had gone to sheriff sale and this didn't set, sell so um you know I'd, I'd sort of have to refresh my memory with chris sort of how we we juggle that but i think yeah i think if the board is sort of comfortable with that general workflow and preparing re nuisance resolutions to bring to you when it reaches that point I think I think that direction from the board would definitely be helpful yeah I, I'm fine with that show okay all right well Jeff and I will uh, work on moving moving this along and hopefully it gets resolved <laughs> sooner than later so one one question I'd have on this is uh, currently in our, our zoning code, we don't have a standard on like grass, um, things like this. So that's kind of the reason why we kind of brought this to you guys to see if you guys were willing to do that since it would go to the tax lien and we might not see the money for a little while. Um, but, you know, we don't have a standard on how tall the grass can be in the township right now. So um, some of these are a little tricky situations. So. so we look at that in your estimation. That's something that I think might be, uh, especially with the residential um, areas and some of the complaints and concerns that I, I see pop up continuously on HOA sites and then and just and then in um, campaigning last year door to door <clears throat> I can tell you you'd be shocked um, but yard upkeep was like besides um, congestion that was the number one thing I heard <laughs> um, how do we get people to take care of their properties when they move in and so um, I don't know what your thoughts are on that, but just some food, you know, planting a seed for future. Uh, yeah. yeah, and I, I, I've talked to, um, uh, we've talked a little bit about, you, you know, either updating our zoning resolution to maybe have a little more restrictive uh, standards as far as keeping your property ma maintained. Um, uh, or we've also looked into pursuit or in considering uh, adopting a property maintenance code that's a pretty big project and that kind of almost goes back to um, having an administrative assistant to take over something sure. and focus on one of those longer range things but we have looked into that because there's a couple quite a few communities that do have them and they've been pretty successful with them so maybe that would help in the future too great thank you thanks and, and your point with the hoas the hoas typically have more control over those issues than we do Okay, that's good to know too. They can be more restrictive on it. I know a lot of them will send a letter, but they'll give like a $25 fine for not mowing. Well, people would rather pay the $25 than mow, it seems, on some of the HOAs I've dealt with. Um, but I don't know if HOAs, if they put it in where they had it and they assessed the fine every day that that grass was over that, then th those fines would build up and it might be more forceful for the HOA to do something like that to, to get them to mow it. Um, but I mean, that's, that's an option for HOAs, but to, mm -hmm. to sure. get more, but, but this one's not in an HOA. So um, that doesn't help the situation. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, that's all I have for the zoning report. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you, Jeff. Thank Thanks. You. All right, Mr. Cowan, maintenance report in parks. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. Um, Although nothing's listed under maintenance, I just have a quick couple of items to quickly comment on. The ADA ramp replacement work that was approved by the board on the last couple meetings, uh, that has begun, is underway. 
Uh, of course, we're doing that in advance of the paving. Uh, we haven't received word yet from the county engineer's office of that paving schedule when that's to uh, happen. But uh, when we do get word, we'll certainly uh, share that with uh, and, uh, Mr. King so that we can post it on our, our website and let folks know when that's coming. Um, Bell Canyon right away. I've had a few calls about that recently. You know, that work uh, is still progressing. Um, the acquisition of the right away and easements for that work. Uh, we're still moving forward with that. Hopefully some letters may be going out in mid July um, to property owners with offers uh, based upon the appraised values that have been determined. So just wanna let you know that's still moving along quite well actually, even though the pandemic we thought would slow it way down, but um, the group we hired has kept them moving along. That's all I have for maintenance right now. If I could move into a parts report, I would like to do so. Yes, please. All right, thank you. Um, I have four items for consideration. First is rejecting bids received and cancellation of the 2020 aquatic center season. I know this is an item that's been kicked around in the last couple of meetings. And uh, at your request from last meeting, we have a uh, resolution that's been provided by attorney Betts. Uh, for this matter. The second item, authorizing the public announcement of calls for requests for qualifications for Lewis Center Trail Phase 3. And I sent the board members uh, and a few other folks notice that we're getting ever so close to building Phase 2 of this trail section. Phase 3, thanks to my predecessor, Ms. Hugh, um, that has already been, part of that project has been funded through Ohio Department of Natural Resources. And uh, this is the next step in seeing that this section is completed. And that is by offering those uh, requests for qualifications. Uh, the third item, we have uh, given you a copy of a I-9 sports field use agreement. Uh, this is just for baseball play at Rowe Park. I think they're only requesting use on Saturdays. It's a pretty simple schedule actually. The last item I have is approval of the Clean Ohio Trail Fund ODNR local project agreement and the authorizing of advertising and bidding for that project. And uh, that's one I just mentioned earlier. I sent the board and a few others a copy of sort of our status of where that project is. It's really coming together quickly and I would just like to keep that moving along. And lastly, uh, there was some discussion a few weeks ago about ticks and fleas and bugs along one of our trails. And just let you know, we have had our first spring for those bugs. The trail leads from Loveland Pond north up to Lewis Center. It uh, runs parallel with the railroad track, heavily used portion of our trail system. So we've already had one spring and we have two more to go. Uh, that's all I have, unless you have any questions. Have any questions or anyone have anything to add? Thank you for the timely turnaround on that, Bill. I think that the residents really, um, really appreciate that responsiveness and um, you and your team took with that. And uh, I also got some emails when they saw us walk in the parks. Uh, I got multiple emails. Thanks for responding. Um, the team I have noticed had been out trimming up. Um, and after our meeting with, uh, with the mowing company, uh, one of the most vocal um, residents uh, actually sent me a message and said, they finally got it right. I don't, you know, I, I don't know what you guys did, but I just wanted to provide the good with the, with the bad, if you will, and, um, and let you know, I appreciate you guys taking my concerns to consideration. So it seems like small stuff, but right now small stuff is is big and I always think the small stuff adds up. So thank you for your, your work. I know it's uh, minimal stuff that takes your time up, but it's important to the residents. So thank you. Sure, no, and I appreciate the kind words and just uh, let you know that we've got a good group of people working for us out in the field. And uh, you know, Aaron James, our superintendent and all the, the folks that work for him, they do a good job and are very conscientious about that. So 
I'll pass that word along. Thank you. All right, I'm going to cover the resolutions that we have here under parks. I make the motion to approve resolution 20-255, rejecting all bids received in response to a request for bids for a three-year combined contract for operation and management of the Orange Township Swimming and Swimming Pool Concession Stand in cancellation of the 2020 Aquatic Center season. Hey, Ryan, that should be 257, I'm sorry. The first one was 254, we did four. Yeah, we did four, five, and six go with the consent agenda, A, B, and C. So 257 then? Yes, please. Okay, gotcha. All right, let me, I'll reread it just to make sure we got it right. Uh, so I make the motion to approve resolution 20-257, rejecting all bids received in response to a request for bids for a three-year combined contract for operation and management of the Orange Township Ohio Swing Pool and Swing Pool Concession Stand and cancellation of the 2020 Aquatic Center and Sea. Second. Mr. Rivers? Yes. Mr. Grumbles? Yes. Ms. Tranto? Yes. Uh, I make the motion to approve resolution 20 258 authorizing the public announcement of calls for request for qualifications for a project known as Lewis Center Trail Phase 3. Second. Mr. Rivers? Yes. Mr. Grumbles? Yes. Ms. Taranto? Yes. I make the motion to approve resolution 20-259 to enter into an agreement with I-9 Sports for use of recreational Premises located at Rogue Park. Second. Mr. Rivers? Yes. Mr. Grumbles? Yes. Ms. Tranto? Yes. And I make the motion to approve resolution 20-260, approving a Clean Ohio Trail Fund ODNR local project agreement with Ohio Department of Natural Resources and authorize advertising and bidding. Second. Mr. Rivers? Yes. Mr. Grumbles? Yes. Ms. Taranto? Yes. All right, well, thank you, Ms. Kraft, for keeping the resolution numbers there in order. And uh, thank you, Mr. Cowan, I think, does that cover everything? It does, and I thank you very much. Mr. Cowan, I got one small comment. Um, I know when we did our parks tour, we had discussed the renting out of, of parks facilities. And um, I just wanted to share that with the board. One, one thing we did talk about was uh, we have a pretty big, um, typically non-corona non period, um, organized sports utilizing the, the fields for practices and things like that. Some of them are, are doing so um, through these agreements and others are just doing it. And so um, I encouraged Bill and Andrew to, to look at, you know, formalizing um, the other parks that are utilized, Walker Woods. Um, I know Row Park is one in, uh, in Glen Oak Park, uh, but, but I, you know, North Road certainly will be one um, in North Park as well. Just to make sure that we um, communicate those with our website redesign and make sure that we're consistent in our expectation. Um, you know, if people are gonna tie those up from residents, there needs to be a, a financial offset for those that are paying the tax. You know, a lot of these organizations, some of them are local, some aren't. And, um, and so uh, we'll, we'll keep that in mind um, as, as we work through uh, the website and, and into the future. Uh <clears throat> All right. Will do. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. That takes us to uh, public safety report. Chief Noble. Good morning. Um, just to let you know, I've also uh, invited Captain A.J. Miller to join us this morning. 
Um, the item on our agenda today is uh, a replacement boat for the fire department. Um, I'm going to speak really from the 50,000 foot level, if you will, kind of an overview. Um, I've asked Captain Miller uh, to join us because I tasked him with putting together a work group um, that reviewed uh, our current processes. Uh, and then that work group uh, basically worked through the last couple of years putting together a proposal um, this plan to replace our boat. Um, and really the reason uh, why we wanted to put so much detail into it is as you see by the cost, this is a very expensive venture. However, um, as you will see by the executive summary that was provided to you earlier, um, I, I think, you know, given that uh, this vessel will last us 30 to 35 years, um, I, and, and given um, what we protect, um, which we'll get into here in a little bit, um, it is a, it is a um, uh, very much of a, a needed expenditure. So the, this project truly began uh, shortly after um, oh, mid to late 2017, after Genoa Township uh, fire department sank uh, their vessel, which is identical to the one that we currently own. Uh, the one that we own uh, was purchased in 2006, a 14 foot uh, vessel uh, powered by a 40 horsepower outboard motor. Um, at the time, it was believed that this vessel would uh, suit our needs. Uh, however, we've learned over, over time and given the 2017 uh, incident um, that, that it's very much insufficient for our intended purpose. Um, the current vessel that we own has a total carrying capacity of 980 pounds. Uh, unfortunately, that includes the weight of the motor, the batteries, the equipment, and the passengers that could be on that, that, that vessel. Um, the, the weight of those items I just named off uh, amount to about 810 pounds, uh, which leaves about 170 pounds for two operators and any victims that need rescue. And you can see already that we're overloading our current vessel, um, which led to what occurred uh, with, with Genoa. The executive summary that you were provided um, 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 had a link that took you out to that news story um, regarding that. So hopefully everybody had an opportunity to review that. Uh, and you may have even heard of that occurring uh, when it did. Um, so it, it, was, it was jointly after that incident, a previous board of trustees, myself and our health and safety committee uh, determined that you know, we would still continue to respond to calls. However, our response would be limited. Uh, we would respond in a cautious and reduced manner um, until such time a new vessel could be recommended. Um, as I indicated, Captain Miller was put in charge of putting together a group of individuals. Um, and over the last couple of years, they've um, basically researched over 15 manufacturers in the US and Canada. Um, our work group visited 15 fire departments that were utilizing boats built by seven different manufacturers. Um, Ten other departments on top of that were contacted by phone to discuss what they utilized. Um, we did utilize the NFPA, National Fire Protection Association Standard 1925-18. Um, which is a guide for determining the department's needs uh, and also was used in writing our specifications um, for a new vessel. Um, the, uh, the, the committee determined uh, after their extensive research and putting together what they believed we needed, um, the committee determined that Silver Ships Inc., which is based in Mo uh, Mobile, Alabama, was the best choice for the purchase. 
Um, the company was selected based on their extensive shipbuilding history, customer satisfaction, stability, their responsiveness um, to uh, our needs. Um, and, and again, as I mentioned in the, in the beginning, uh, a big return on investment. Um, the purchase, uh, if you agree to it today, um, would significantly increase our ability uh, to serve our residents uh, and the more than 3.4 million um, projected for 2020 visitors to Alum Creek. And, and that number was provided to us uh, in another report that we provided a link to you as it was a very uh, significant document, uh, too much to provide in an email. So we provided a link out to that document. Um, and really, we believe that this work group has put together um, a vessel that will meet our current needs uh, and accommodate future growth. Um, a real quick summary of the vessel that was selected. Uh, and again, uh, you, you received the spec, uh, some um, uh, drawings uh, of what this, this vessel uh, would look like, uh, car carrying capacity of 4,000 pounds that is of personnel and or equipment. This significantly increases our sonar capabilities, um, which is the primary tool that we use to locate uh, drowning victims. Uh, a dive platform, uh, which would allow for multiple divers and their equipment on one vessel, not multiple vessels as we need to utilize now, uh, just for that operation alone. Um, which significantly reduces our time it takes for divers to enter the water. Uh, a firefighting, firefighting capability, uh, which we do not have currently anywhere on Alum Creek. So when we say firefighting uh, capability, uh, vessels currently on the water that we may have to respond out to, uh, vessels that are docked at the marinas, um, both sailboat and Alum Creek Marina, as, as well as not only on the dock, but out at the moorings that are located uh, in those areas. Uh, to the structures that are at the beach and also at the marina. Um, uh, so by, by placing a fire pump on this, it would come with it. It would allow us to flow more than a thousand gallons a minute um, uh, for those types of calls and incidences. and. You know, I, I have to say the, the there's a, uh, unfortunately a saying that says, well, you know, if, if, a, if a vessel catches fire on the water, it, it, will, it will eventually go out because it will burn down to the water line. Well, that's all well and good, but think about the people that are on those vessels that are gonna have to jump into the water. Also think about the hazardous materials incident that could result as a, uh, as a result of that. Um, you know, the fuels and the oils and the other contaminants that would be entering uh, the water. Uh, I think also with that, it's worth mentioning that, that we have had several vessels sink um, uh, on Alum Creek over the years, whether it's been in the marina or out on the water itself. Um, so I, I think when you look at the marinas, um, there's a waiting list, which means there's always 100% capacity at the marinas. There are, Alum Creek sailboat has 135 dock spaces. Uh, the current marina has 200 dock spaces and 25 moorings. Um, none of that with, with fire protection, as I mentioned. Uh, all of that in and of itself represents 17 million uh, dollars in just boat and dock assets that, um, and that, and that doesn't include the actual boats that are on the water in any given time over peak days, which we've received from the Army, Army Corps of Engineers, that's about 500 boats. Um, the, uh, uh, in trying to determine the best way to dock this vessel, because we wanted to get away from having to tow the boat to the water, that takes time. Towing it to the water, finding a space in order to launch it, which means a lot of times we're having to move people out of our way, remove them, um, um, uh, get it into the water, get our people on, 
Um, we really wanted a space where we could keep this vessel docked for faster launching capability. Uh, so we were working with and have worked with the Alum Creek Sailing Association. And we've uh, worked with them on dock space. Um, and we believe that to reduce our launch time 50 to 70%. So a reduction of 50 to 70%. Um, so with that, that's kind of a quick synopsis, uh, a review. Um, I think the other thing to mention is our partnerships that we have with the Ohio Division of Natural Resources and ODNR, uh, Division of Watercraft. They are the primary law enforcement agency responsible for Alum Creek. Um, just so you know, they have a minimum daily staffing in the district of two officers. And when we say district, that's over eight counties. Um, so what that means is there are significant periods of time when Alum Creek has no officers to assist um, with emergency calls. So that leaves it really to just the fire and emergency responses that are in the area. So I think with, with a vessel that we're proposing that those partnerships will be able to assist them better um, we also have existing partnerships with the Delaware County Sheriff's Office, um, Delaware County EMS, and we also work with Franklin County uh, Sheriff's Office dive team, as well as Columbus Division of Fire, uh, Genoa's dive team, Washington Township, and that. So um, we believe that that this vessel um, would would um, really meet our needs on Allen Creek well into the future. The investment, as I said, is a 30 to 35 year investment. Um, we're also working uh, with our grant writer to look at potential grants uh, that could be reimbursed back to us for this purchase. Um, but right now, um, which we have budgeted for and we budgeted for over the last couple of years, um, the dollar amount being uh, 429,158 78 cents. Uh, and then we would uh, have an annual uh, uh, dock fee of 2000 because we're going to take up two dock spaces at Alum Creek Sailing. So um, with that, um, I would turn it over to the board with any questions you may have. And as I indicated, that's a summary which I was handling. Uh, if there's any details, because Captain Miller headed this up, he would be able to assist with those questions. Um, I think it's also important to note the work group from the fire department included individuals that have sailing knowledge, that have um, a, a water knowledge, one being a captain, uh, he's an actual captain. So we, we tried to utilize those people with experience within the department um, to, to really look at this. So uh, I think with that, I've probably uh, spoken enough. Uh, I will turn it over to the board with any questions. Do we have any uh, questions, comments, thoughts? Yeah, I I, um, I caught when you were talking about DNR, county, et cetera. What what are the current entities that service calls on Allen Creek in full? When you say service Allen Creek, I'm, I imagine you're speaking of uh, when you had a call a couple weeks a recovery right. operation a couple weeks ago. Who who when, got the call and who has resources that respond? When we respond to Allen Creek, we respond uh, Orange Township, Genoa Township, uh, Berlin, um, Tri uh, Township does respond, al although their capabilities are limited as well. Um, and then we will utilize outside agencies such as Columbus Police uh, Recovery Unit, uh, Franklin County Sheriff's Office dive team, um, and we can utilize Washington Township. And then when ODNR is available uh, and can respond or are, are on the water, we utilize their resources, divisional watercraft resources. So if there's a, if there's a recovery operation, I'm, I'm in, inferring here, but 
you're, you're stating that if, if someone were to call and say someone went down, they didn't come up, DNR might respond and say, sorry, we can't help today. Correct. They, they literally won't respond to a, a missing person call? If they do not have anybody on the water, um, if they're tied up at another uh, state park, another water source, um, then they do not have those resources to commit. Our sheriff has no presence on the water? Uh, they have no vessels on the water. Do they have vessels available? Um, Captain Miller, I, uh, before I speak, uh, I'll let you answer that. I do not believe so. I believe they would utilize our vessels as well as utilizing um, ODNR's vessels if they're on the water. And that is Delaware County. That is correct. Uh, Delaware County Sheriff's Office has no vessels for response to any body of water in Delaware County at this time. Um, so the, the main response um, responsibility for Allen Creek mainly falls to Orange Township Fire Department. We cover the majority of Allen Creek, whereas Berlin Township does cover um, the next largest portion of it in um, just north of our district, obviously. And if you go up even farther uh, north of 3637, uh, Tri Township Fire has a very small portion of it that they that they call. Um, Division of Natural Resources is the primary law enforcement that's applicable um, to Allen Creek, and we do work hand in hand with them. Um, now, oftentimes, if their resources are tied up, again, they're, they're covering eight counties, um, and their minimum is two. Um, their their general resources are not much higher than that on a day-to-day -day basis, given the um, peak season is from Memorial Day to Labor Day, um, which is uh, also the, the time that you know, most employees and other agencies also take time off is, is pretty common. Um, so there are definitely times when there is there are no Division of Natural Resources officers of, of, at Allen Creek. Now they do try to make Allen Creek a priority because it is one of the busiest. But in answer to the original question, if they do get a call, if they're not tied up at another body of water, they will respond. However, they could be responding from one of the other seven counties. Um, so our response is in an emergency capacity initially, as into your original question, when somebody went under the water, for example, and they didn't see them. So we would respond in an emergency capacity and do searches um, with our sonar units. And that's where we bring in Genoa Township because they have a dive team. Washington Township has a dive team. Um, we use them as a rescue dive team. Um, our job is to help use our sonar to find these persons. We also have some other uh, tools in our box, if you will, um, to try to, to, we have what's called drag hooks, which essentially just blind fishing. Um, at some point, the incident commander will determine that it's no longer in a rescue situation, generally based on time, and then it becomes a recovery. Um, the problem we have, generally speaking, is those dive teams, um, once we transition from a uh, rescue to recovery, those dive teams would then be released and we would have to bring in specifically recovery dive teams, and that's uh, usually law enforcement. However, we still are um, going to be responsible to help in that effort, being as that um, incident occurred in our response district. So we would still be um, have to help utilizing our assets and our personnel, whether that be to house the divers on our vessel, um, to run sonar in the search area. Part of the problem is on, is on Allen Creek, when, when people do go underneath, it's very difficult to find landmarks to begin our search. So we usually try to bring the eyewitnesses on board with us so we can get a good triangulation on the last time they were seen. And then we will start the sonar process from there. Once we have good sonar markings, we will, we will check those again and again. And we drop weighted buoys down on those positive marks that we find. And that's where the divers would then begin. Uh, it's better if, and it's quicker 
for this process if we can do this from from one vessel rather yeah. than have divers on, on multiple vessels trying to coordinate um with with the um potentially based on the footprint right if you had a large triangulation you may want more than one vessel diving in Co correct Def definitely not necessarily maybe not diving in, in recovery mode generally we we would use if there's two dive teams they kind of what we do is if columbus dive team in the recovery boat in franklin county we would divide the area in half and one dive team would be responsible for one side and, and vice versa they kind of operate independently of each other in that case but definitely um the sonar capability the sonar and there's multiple sonar styles that we would be able to use right now we can only utilize essentially one um this the new vessel would be equipped with three different sonar capabilities uh, it's a, a 3d model a down scan and a side scan sonar which helps we use them in in, in different times so oftentimes what we'll do is if we have a what we believe is is a good signal from one sonar we'll use the other signals to try to confirm that and we share that information part of the issue is right now with with the divers being on different boats we would have to take a picture of that sonar and then either send it via cell phone which isn't the greatest back to the divers for them to look at the ability to have the divers on board with us and see the these sonar images as we're as we're obtaining them uh, makes for a lot faster recovery time. I know there's a lot of information that was in the report. And if you guys looked at the um, Corps of Engineers report that was produced in 2011, and those statistics uh, went out to 2020. Currently, those numbers, th there's no way in 2011, obviously, they predicted the coronavirus. So the numbers we're seeing are, particularly this year, are a lot higher. We're at, at higher density, the average for that 500 boats on the water any given time was a medium to high density uh, projection. And we're, the numbers we've seen this season, because everything is closed and, and Allen Creek is currently open, we're, we're exceeding the high density number, which was 691 estimated boats on the water any given time. We're definitely seeing uh, an increased run volume this year already, we've already had the one death on Allen Creek and we had two very near drownings and we've had multiple, multiple other calls for service just for water rescues where it turned out that people were, were, were found or recovered if, you know, while we were there. I know there was a lot of information uh, included, so I don't know what the other two trustees, are we okay with moving forward today or need more time to digest? I just have one more question. Sorry, I was on mute. Is there the other entities that, that cover the, the body of water? You mentioned multiple townships there and do any of them have a vessel that is remotely similar to this? Um, I, Berlin Township acquired a vessel some years back. It is a 25 foot vessel. It's a it's a little different. Uh, at the at the time that they acquired their vessel, they were still a volunteer organization. So they um, kind of speci uh, specified that vessel based on their, their their staffing at that time. So it is a 25 foot vessel. It is a flat bottom boat, which in our research was not the best. A vessel for Allen Creek. All the existing ODNR boats that they'd ever purchased and the current one that they have are either a, a V-Haul or a modified V-Haul, which is what it, what we specified as well. Okay. And then with Genoa, when their boat sank, did they replace that? They have not replaced that at this time. They're, they're currently existing problems with it. It's been out of service a lot. Um, I don't know that they're going to replace it. They are considering, I believe, not uh, renewing their dive team operation. Chief Noble might have more information on that. Okay. Not not just a question. The uh, details aren't pertinent, but I just wondered if they did. I, 
I just was was uh, with with some with a body of water that has this many different entities touching it, as opposed to to us going it alone. I would I would like to explore an intergovernmental agreement where we solicit the other communities, um, talk to DNR, talk to the county, um, and 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 the various townships. This is a significant expense. I understand the. Um, the importance of, of being able to respond. Um, I have a I have a boat docked, so I, I get the the fire response concerns as well. I do think there's uh, benefit in having a boat on the water. It's it's a quick um, it's a quick you know quick response in that in that sense. There's also some risks in having a boat with that kind of equipment just sitting out on the water that we'd have to address. Um, but I, I would encourage Andrew, this might be something more in your wheelhouse uh, with Chief and Captain Miller to, to work on um, advocating for an intergovernmental agreement and shared costs on something like this. It's just because, uh, you know, if we have one, if we have a, 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 a craft that's docked up there, you know, if it's in portion A or B or C or whatever, it would benefit all stakeholders, kind of how they're operating now. So um, I, I would like to see us press for that. I do think that a V-hole or modified V-hole would be better. I don't know if they've looked at even like tritune type approach because of the chop and the different conditions, but the ability to get into shallow water with it, with that. Um, but you know, sounds silly to roll out on a tritune, but they'll they'll they're pretty effective at getting out and holding weight too and buoyant so we did look that route actually this boat has a better uh, lower draft than any of the tritunes not, oh, wow. not the tritunes don't meet any of the nfpa standards that we would be uh ad have to adhere to okay that's good to know um but i the the main push being feedback here on my end anyway is uh let's exhaust an intergovernmental agreement here and see if we can get some shared shared expenses and partnership on something that's going to benefit more than just orange as opposed to going it alone and if we can if we can get them to contribute then i would be far more eager to just push that through than than have us go it alone i i know that's not what you wanted to hear today but i hope it makes sense so if i may um it sounds as though um uh, at least Trusty Grumbles would like Mr. King and I um, to pursue um, with other townships that do service the Allen Creek Reservoir area or other entities, let's say that, um, not just townships, but it also sounds like uh, ODNR uh, and Army Corps to see if there is a way to obtain an inner governmental agreement to assist with purchasing the vessel before we move forward. Is that in is Delaware that County? In I, Del I know Delaware County was exploring something like this in the past, um, mm -hmm. but they they yielded to it. But instead of it being Orange Township Fire Department vessel, it could be, you know, uh, Alum Creek emergency response vessel. And, so you know, my 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 only concern with that would be that so now who operates the vessel? That's something that could be worked out in an intergovernmental agreement. Whoever's proximity to the dock might respond to the call. There could be cost sharing, different sorts of things. It's no different than today when, you know, if we want sheriff service in our township above and beyond, we pay for it. Um, if we want, uh, additional coverage, we may have to pay for it. So, you know, at the same time, if a call comes into Berlin and, or Genoa or whoever, and we respond because we have a boat, <clears throat> that's, that's, that puts us back to square one. We're absorbing all of the costs and risks and everything else associated with responding on another jurisdiction. So instead of going that reactionary mode, I just think it'd be a worthwhile effort to have a discussion with these other entities, explain that the, the pitch you just gave us 
if if I have any stake in that water, I'd be interested in hearing it. I thought it was uh, I thought it was good. There's a lot of risk and um, uptick in use, especially with the COVID. Um, and you know, people are going to have accidents on the water. It's just the way it goes. Maybe not had vessel fire so far, but we're going to inevitably that'll happen. Uh, I just saw a video of one that took out a, a good chunk of dock and several vessels. So um, better to be prepared than than react again. So. I just think that there might be an appetite for this. Um, this is a significant vessel. It's, it's well equipped. It, it's got tons of functionality, and um, you know, it's something they could use. So we could look at sort sorting all of those questions out, Chief. In my opinion, as far as who operates, um, you know, if we have dive teams in the area, we could work that out too, as opposed to having to stand up our own immediately. Um, and leverage them and then ease into something like that and, and um, qualify our folks. It just, just seems like a, a collaborative approach is in order here. That's all. It is a, a significant purchase. Uh, and there is a lot here to digest. I would like to hear from our grant writer as far as, you know, how, how realistic as far as grants out there, of what could be used uh, for it. So, I think for today, if we could just table this to the next meeting, give us some time to kind of process through it. a few more things, um, would probably be in the best interest. Matt, that, what's, the, the, what's the turnaround time on building that boat? Captain Miller has that. It's um, uh, close to 300 days. Yeah. 210 days from the time that the final, and obviously, I mean, we had this original specification and the price, you know, raw materials went up. So we did incur by waiting a, a fairly significant price increase, which depending on how long the items table for. But yeah, if, if we want to a, even have this potentially, I mean, there's a lot of training that has to go into it before it can be just put on the water. We'd be looking at currently a delivery time of next April, probably May. And, then and the um, boat slip where you have to store it, who owns that? Allen Creek Sail Club is in partnership with the Ohio Division of Natural Resources and, and the Corps of Engineers. So, I mean, currently, the, the re one of the reasons we selected that is because it's already secured behind a uh, restricted entry gate. Right. Uh, I think that they would want to store that at no charge. Um, because it's taking care of the waterways. That's something to consider. But um, I have to be honest, I'm on board with Ben on this. Um, with so many entities touching that water and us taking on a primary cost for taking care of um, any accident on the water. I, I think that's really, um, that's a great opportunity to have an intergovernmental agreement and, and everyone have some skin in the game if we can get them on board. I agree, Trustee Taranto, and thank you for, for taking that into consideration. I, I appreciate that. I wouldn't even mind starting that now, um, getting Andrew, get with Paul Wise, um, Sheriff Martin, see what we can do. Well, I can tell you, knowing that the Sheriff's Office looked into it before, I mean, you, you see the cost of this vessel, anyone sees that it's going to get sticker shock. But if you start chipping away and everybody throws in 75 grand, you know, or hundred grand, that, that's a lot more palatable. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I just think the details can be worked out. And, and further, um, I'm not so much worried about dock access, Captain Miller. Um, part of what I have to worry about where my boat's docked and the kind of equipment I have on it alone is, is uh, I just actually confronted a, a two, two gentlemen um, over the weekend that were trying to access the boat dock via John boat. And so they'll pull up on a boat and, and circumvent the measures in place. And so, um, you know, you, you always have that risk when you're on the water. And uh, I would say, let's reach out to, to the core and DNR. Maybe there's something here with that intergovernmental agreement approach where you know, the DNR facility is a covered shed. It's secured. It's a lot harder to gain access to. Um, and it's and it's a unique location, right? So so we're not navigating around other vessels when we need to get out on the water. 
you're not in a non no wake area you're you're dropping chocks and hitting the you know or pulling chocks and hitting the water full speed ahead which you, you know your line of work you know time is everything so um i i would be way more comfortable if i knew that boat was parked somewhere secured with all the equipment on it and uh and was isolated for emergency services you think about access to you know your squads or whatever when when you get to land um and that would lend itself well you don't have to navigate around bystanders and you don't have to walk excessive dock space to get off and you know you've got more more square footage more more platform more working area to do your emergency responsiveness uh, whatever you need to do so maybe that's something we can achieve um i don't think it's unfair or you know for andrew i'll i'll it's i'll assist with this if you need it um or trusty taranto as a liaison I'll, I'll certainly take time off and advocate to get this through because I think it's a, a partnership approach would be beneficial. And um, yeah, I, I, think, I think we could achieve it. I really do. I think that uh, especially, you know, you look where Genoa is, they know there's a problem, right? Um, plus if they have an incident over, um, you know, in a, a different body of water or something like that, maybe with the technology proposed here, you know, we could look at, at, um, at assisting um, on a contract basis type thing like we do with our mechanic. Um, just, just all food for thought. I appreciate your, your effort on this. You exhausted it and uh, you did a lot of research and, and um, this is a profession, professional proposal and you've done, you've, done, you've done your diligence here. So commend you and uh, Chief Noble and your team for for doing that well done thank you hey, uh, well, when we break it in and 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 what do you call that you know the yellow ribbon uh are we gonna the champagne smash the, smash the yeah. we gonna smash yeah, a bottle of champagne against it <laughs> no they actually break a we, fire we won't go that far yeah no. we won't go that far but uh we'll certainly so someday maybe we'll be able to do that um i i thank the board Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I would just say that would be a first, uh, this type of uh, celebration. But anyway. Uh, I would like to thank the board for uh, your consideration this morning. And um, uh, we've heard what you had to say. And uh, we'll work. Uh, we'll go back. We'll, we'll uh, uh, review and we'll work with Mr. King to start and see where we go. Thank you, Chief. Uh, with that, I have uh, no other items on the agenda this morning. All right, uh, fiscal officer report, Mrs. Kraft. Okay, thank you. Um, not much today. Uh, the first thing is the, um, just to follow up from the last uh, special meeting, the permissive motor vehicle hard copy was sent via certified mail to the BMV uh, before the July 1st deadline. It was actually mailed on 625. And uh, an email copy was also sent and um, she said it would all be in order. They just need the hard copy. So don't expect any issues with, uh, with that. Um, the second item is the Elon purchase card. Um, you all should have received my memo just kind of outlining uh, why uh, we need a change. I don't think there's any surprise uh, any surprises or anything that's earth shattering in that just uh, trying to give you guys a kind of um, some foundation or groundwork on why we want to make this change. Um, I've been working with uh, Andrew and Chris Betts on the terms and conditions, as well as a new credit card policy. So the hope is at the July 20th meeting to be able to present uh, both the um, terms and condition for um, approval as well as the credit card policy. So this is just kind of an awareness. We're going this direction and um, give you guys an opportunity to say you're, you, you know, or, you know, let me know if you need more information or um, if you're opposed to this change or anything like that. So I guess I just ask for some feedback. No, oh, thanks for being proactive on this. Those credit cards have always been such a headache. It looks, looks like it'll be a lot easier to work with. Yeah, I agree. And I, I do want to say, um, I know this was a transitional item that you took on. So um, those can always be harder than 
things that you organically, you know, with trying to catch up, especially with an elected type position, you know, um, so great job hitting the ground running on this one. Thank you. Okay, well, that's it on that. And then the last item is the CARES Act. Um, right now, our expected payout will be about $22,290.27. Um, there'll be a redistribution of any unallocated CARES funds on October 15th. So if our expenses exceed that, there could be a chance we could get even more expenses covered. Um, if we don't use any of the money that's been allocated to us, it will go back to the state. Um, and just a little awareness on if we move, if the board approves this resolution, um, I will have to create a new fund. So I'll do that um, uh, coming up here in July. So the next um, end of month reporting that you see, you'll see the new fund created because um, we have to track all those expenses and the money separately. I do have some expenses already. Uh, for example, the laptops, um, Patty's home computer, uh, Bill's team, I've been working with them on tracking their overtime that they have for cleaning the bathrooms. Um, and I'm just wondering, are there any other expenses? And then there's also some signage expenses that Bill just submitted um, for signs, you know, indicating the park, the playgrounds and, and things were, were closed. Uh, are there any other items that anybody is aware of that uh, could be ex uh, considered an expense item for CARES? You, you mentioned the telework equipment, right? Yeah, it's I'm... about six. Yeah, it's about six or seven thousand dollars with it. All the software and, and everything. You got it. I've already got those uh, uh, okay, filed great. away, ready to enter. Great. And then uh, Chief's masks that that he all of those type things and it, well, is, that's um, and talking with Chief Chief, I think is putting those under FEMA. So that's why I'm just going to have to coordinate closely with the fire department to make sure we don't dub, try to double dip. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Yes, so, that's correct. I, yeah. yeah, I was just going to say yes, that's correct. Um, we'll work together to make sure, but uh, I'm going to be seeking reimbursement for those items under uh, FEMA grant. What and then. Um, any charges associated with the uh, remote meeting software and stuff like I got a notice from WebEx that I'd have to start paying if we wanted to we use WebEx one meeting. So any Zoom expenses? I have, uh, yeah, I do have the the bill uh, from Michelle on Zoom that's included in the file. Also, I should have mentioned that one. But yes, I do have a couple hundred bucks on, in Zoom. So um, if there's anybody, you know, this is this is going to be a process we have till October 15th to get this first round submitted. So as you think of or come across other expenses or remember things, oh, we did this, you know, I wasn't here when the when it first started. So, you know, I have a general idea on things that we spent uh, money on, but if there's other expenses or other things that come up that are directly COVID related, that, uh, like I said, working with Mike Kelly on his overtime, for example, that's not insignificant, um, the additional hours to clean all those bathrooms. Uh, so if there's something else that anybody thinks of, please uh, send it my way. Thank you, Lisa. All right, I'll make the motion to approve resolution 20-261 to request Orange Township share of funds from the Delaware County Coronavirus, Coronavirus Relief Distribution Fund. Second. Mr. Rivers? Yes. Mr. Grumbles? Yes. Ms. Taranto? Yes. Thank you, that's it. Thank you. Uh, administrative report, Administrator King. Thank you, Chair. I realize we're sort of touching close to the 90 minute mark, so I'll, I'll try to be as condensed here as I can because we touched on a little bit of this with, with Ms. Bonnie's zoning report. So, you know, as, as Trustee Grumbles mentioned, I mean, one of the things that I, I think was sort of evident with the Orange Townships, uh, I think fair to say explosive growth is that a lot of positions became highly transactional and you know work had to be done and work was shifted around and different people took on different things so you know sort of looking at things and having the opportunity over the last couple of months to talk with uh you know department heads and different staff members i mean what what you heard today in the zoning i think was a was a, a portion of that bearing fruit so i just wanted to talk about a couple other areas um sort of to 
you know, make the trustees aware of sort of what, what I was thinking and making sure that there was a feeling of continuing to head in that direction. So as uh, Trustee Grumbles mentioned, we can sort of start with the, the parks is, uh, you know, we had the opportunity the other day <clears throat> with Bill to uh, do, a, you know, like a site walk and, you know, make an assessment of the various different things that were, were going on out there. And I think it was fair to conclude that just with the day-to-day -day upkeep of the park, the bathrooms, and then some of the custodial work at 1680, um, you know, with the drive time involved and, and, and whatnot, that, you know, that's, that's pretty much a full-time equivalent position and one that we did have previously that was never filled uh, because of this COVID thing. And I think just the transition from one board to another. So, you know, I think talking to um, Mr. Cowan, that, you know, that's a position he'd like to, to refill. We've talked about, you know, reformulating that, as I indicated, to maybe combine that with the custodian position and, and whatnot. So, you know, we're sort of still working through what that would look like. In addition, um, you know, I, I think one of the things that the board is aware of is that Marianne has been the Parks and Rec Administrator for quite some time, it seems, but a good chunk of her duties is taken up with um, things that are, you know, sort of on the administration side that's typically, you know, what, what falls to me to to, to, to direct and be responsible for, such as the agenda meet, agenda for the meetings, you're getting in the backup material, working on the draft journal, things like that. So that really limits her ability to help Bill uh, run the department. And again, I, I just, I know everyone's broadly familiar with this, but I mean, when, when Bill came in, yeah, I, I went back and looked at some stuff, news articles, different resolutions and whatnot. And it, it seemed pretty clearly contemplated that Beth would continue to work with with Bill and then when Beth left, some of those job duties got shifted to Bill and some of them got shifted to Aaron. And then no one really took over the road superintendent. Aaron sort of just got his, his old job duties and some new ones. So, you know, in talking with Mr. Callan, I think there's sort of a hope that Marianne can come in there and, and help take some of the day-to-day -day administrative load off of him that I think she was always intended to do, but just hasn't been able to do. So, and then sort of, you know, following uh, with that, um, you know, at, at the administrative assistant, you know, for the, for me with Nancy's position, um, there's, you know, there's some aspects, some job duties that just aren't being done and will need to be, that there'll be job duties that need to be shifted to that position from Mary Ann's um, plate. And then there's some other job duties such as, you know, the, the HR coordinator type role that we've discussed creating that will need to be done. Some of, you know, the light office purchasing, making sure that, um, you know, pens, pencils, paper, stuff like that, that is done. Records retention, re responding to public records requests, helping with fr the front desk items. I mean, that's either sort of done, you know, on an as needed basis now or not done at all. So it's sort of an opportunity to realign some of those job duties that just maybe haven't been done well or at all into that, that position. And it'll necessarily have to happen with with Marianne and just on the HR coordinator position. I mean, over the last, I'd say, you know, months, six weeks, you know, the, the the leave, I think, is the most significant part of that job. And, you know, upon recommendation of the HR coordinator and, you know, based on the board's actions today, you know, that'll be something CBiz will be um, administering. So, you know, that's that's a big a big task taken off, but there still is is sort of work to do. Uh, like I just got an email today and somebody needs a new card. So stuff like that just just happens. So then, um, you know, the final thing that, that I sort of see um, and just talking with all the different department heads and just what I've, I've seen is is having somebody that's ultimately responsible for ensuring we've got tight internal processes that it's helping ensure compliance. I mean, that was one of the things that that I noticed is that you know, particularly in the HR department, there just wasn't, no one sort of ever double checked anyone and that led to errors um, and, you know, it's different iterations of that, of those errors. So, you know, having someone there that's helpful for that, you know, one of the things that I think, um, particularly in talking with Bill, and I don't want this to be seen at all as Bill complaining, because Bill is be the last person in the building to ever complain about anything, is that there's an opportunity to have someone help with some of the procurement uh, in the contracting, you know, Bill has a great deal of RFQs that he's dealing with every year. You know, we sort of lean on Corda to help us with that, uh, but that's an opportunity to lever bring that back in house, have someone help 
manage that a little bit better, work closely with Bill. You know, there's some other things that we can do with those RFQs to speed that up. And then, you know, just one of the things that, uh, you know, again, that I've, that I've seen is when we've had issues with contracts, like we, we did with the, with the mowing contract, there's, it's been sort of, a, it's been difficult to, um, it sort of becomes everyone's responsibility and then it, follow-up becomes difficult. So, you know, one of the things that I'd like to talk to the, to the board about is, is creating some new position that would help coordinate those procurement contracts and compliance issues and, um, you know, be double checking ourselves, you know, helping being the traffic controller for work orders, for purchases, for the credit cards, things like that. And, and again, that's not nothing is that to say that, you know, there's anything wrong with what with what Miss Craft is doing, you know, I think some of the conversations I've had with her is, I think there's a lot of things that have been pushed off onto the fiscal office over time that probably should be done on our end, and it's really not fair to them to be chasing people around for credit cards and invoices and W nines and purchase order requisitions. That really, that that's really our responsibility to have that stuff pretty tightened up by the time it gets to the fiscal office for payment. So. Um, so that's sort of you know where where you know my thoughts are at generally. So I wanted to have this discussion with the board and you know what what as I indicated with the the zoning position, I think sort of the next step would be teasing out these job duties a little bit better, making sure we have good position descriptions. You know, having the opportunity um, you know in the case of what Bill needs in the parks and what you know Michelle talked about is uh, you know getting some some positions. Uh, advertise, get some candidates in, start looking at resumes, start figuring out candidates so we can uh, get some of the business of Orange Township taken care of. So I'm done. So, so again, Mr. King, the resolution you have uh, for us just allows you, because obviously these things take time uh, to move forward and getting this ironed out, but then ultimately any any final decisions come to the board, correct? Yes, so I mean, the way that um, I think what I would anticipate is sort of what we talked about with the uh, zoning assistant and well, the zoning intern is, uh, you know, we, we sort of, we've identified a candidate for that, move them through the, the pre-employment process, and then it would come to the board for, approval just like it always has in the past to actually hire that person in that position. Okay, can, hey Andrew, this is Lisa. Um, help me understand the impact of the fiscal office. This is the first that I'm kind of hearing about this uh, this change other than it's not on the agenda and, and um, uh, just trying to understand the impact of the fiscal office. I don't think it'd be a negative impact. As I said, I think the, the, the vision would be, it would be helpful because, you know, ever just from everything from RFQs to retaining contracts to vendor follow-up, you know, just setting, you know, tickle ticklers for, uh, uh, hey, con it's time for contract renewal, those sorts of things. Um, I, I don't see it as, as anything negative. Like I, like I indicated, I think it would, if anything, some of those things that that now sort of fall to the fiscal office to make good after the fact, like, hey, a purchase has occurred, you know, we need we need the the credit card with the invoice and we need the receipt and we need the authorization. There'd be more of that done on the front end rather than trying to chase it around on the backside and sort of post hoc create the, the necessary audit trail. So, like I said, I think it would be I don't see it as any negative and, and I don't think there's any, I, I certainly am not contemplating or suggesting that there be a reduction in your staff if you're, if that's sort of what you're asking as well. No, I wasn't asking that. I was just trying to understand um, exactly what, like I said, what the impact was to, to fiscal. So um, just uh, like I said, hadn't, uh, had not had did not know you were thinking about going this direction. Not saying it's a bad thing or a good thing at this point, but um, uh, you know we do have room to tighten things up. That's for sure. You and I've had you and I have had discussions about that. But sure, and that's you know, and it's and that's what I would envision it consistent with with those discussions. It you know it becomes one of those things that you know what we discussed earlier with with the zoning uh, 
department is that there are certain things that become, as, as Trustee Grumbles mentioned, like tra heavy transactional loads and sort of the, the, the RFQs, the contracting, the purchasing, the procurement, all that sort of stuff, ensuring internal compliance, not just with financial stuff, but just trainings. Um, you know, that's one of the things that, again, I've noticed that, and we had a question come up in a different context about how trainings are tracked and wh who's being required to do what trainings. They're just, it, there's been sort of a looseness of that and just making sure that somebody's more responsible ultimately for all that accountability, I think would help free everyone from that sort of their piece of the transactional load. And because it's a reoccurring, it's a reoccurring issue that the, it, one person in that position to would would take the load off because it wouldn't be four or five people repeating the same process four or five different times. It would be one person that would that would be doing a lot of that over and over again. So you're looking at hiring a office manager. Um, I, I don't know what that what you'd want to call that person, but like I said, I viewed it as more helpful on the 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 con the contracting and purchasing side of it than anything else and then the compliance i don't want I to guess understand i need that. a little bit more i'm seeing this big broad overview but if you could dig down a little bit deeper on what exactly are you looking for what positions you talk about marianne and that's great move her over there but then who will be handling um, rentals who will be greeting our residents when they come in um, who will be answering the phone um, and then you know, you've talked about using Nancy for different HR things. Um, and we know we need more help on the roads and, and Bill needs more help. So I'm hearing a lot of overview stuff, but I, I feel like you already know what you want specifically. I'm just not hearing that. What? Well, I mean, as I indicated, trustee, we'd work to get the, the position descriptions nailed down. So, but as I indicated, and with Mary Ann's work, that would most of the, you know, administrative stuff would be, would be necessary to shift over into the administrative assistant job position or job description, because that just is where it fits most naturally. You know, again, as I think was mentioned in the zoning um, discussion, I think having both Marianne and a zoning assistant in their respective apart departments helps with a lot of those phone calls. Cause you know, talking at the front with the folks at the front desk, they do get a lot of zoning calls. They do get a lot of parks calls, um, you know, occasionally some road complaints. That's a, that's a big chunk of it. There's a few other little one-off type things like vendor transient vendor type stuff, you know, uh, energy aggregation type, type stuff but a big big chunk of the the calls that come in are for those two departments which is why um you know what either jeff michelle or bill end up taking a lot of those calls or emails and, and whatnot so it definitely would 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 help them in that regard and like i said that we would come up with position descriptions and everything so i mean i am offering primarily a high level overview of 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 all these positions now I mean, is there something specific that I'm, that you feel like I'm glossing over? No, I was so just happy to address to it. Understand the, the big, the whole picture. So you plan to bring forward a little that more of a firm outline the resolution that we have uh, before us helps like as far as Michelle and getting the zoning intern hired that some of these processes can move forward without us having to call a special meeting or um, you know pass anything I mean that and that is I think ultimately right. what the what the benefit would be because I mean there, there, the again, like using the park assistant position as as an example, I know that's something we we really need to fill, and especially now that the bathrooms are open, it's a significant need. So we, but the position description is going to need to be 
modified and whatnot. So we need to get the position description modified. Then we need to get um, an advertise. We need to get that candidate candidates interviewed and, and whatnot. So just wanted to get started with some of these processes so that um, it isn't like the fall when we're we're finally filling some of these needs. I guess right. I don't understand the necessity of a resolution. That's very general. And um, especially when he just said that he's, you know, trying to flesh this out and figure it out. I, I guess what's the point of of, uh, of this resolution? Well, I think it goes back to like as an example for the zoning intern uh, to move that forward without us having to approve the pre-employment, those kind of things, just to add a little more flexibility. So some of these things that we agree upon can move forward. And then um, I'm sure Administrator King will keep us aware of any other things that he's working on or uh, you know, touch base with each of us before anything else would, would move forward. But I just use the zoning intern as an example. Everyone, there's consensus, we've all agreed so um, to get that person on board and get that moving uh, gives him the authority to make sure we get all of our ducks in a row. So the next meeting we're ready to go to approve um, that new hire. I've never seen hiring a, a real issue um, or something that gets held up. I personally would rather any hiring um, approval of any job descriptions, discussion of uh, reorganization or reassigning, I, I would, prefer that that go through the trustees. I mean, that's obviously a board decision. I mean, I, I will tell you that Orange was a little bit of an outlier with my experience with the boards and that again, especially when you had an administrator. And if the board is in the position where they have to review every single position description, because I can tell you another thing that's coming down the pike and it's becoming an, and it becoming a bigger necessity is the policy manual. I mean, I think, and I know this is gonna sound a little overheated, but there's aspects of it that I think are a borderline crisis. So that's something, again, that's going to need to be addressed. So, you know, there is sort of a limited capacity of the board to um, be, uh, be involved in all this, but I mean, if you want to be involved in every single position description change, that's fine. They, you certainly can be. That's that's completely well, within. We don't your... have a very large uh, staff, so that's not really a big deal. But as far as the policy manual, um, in the past, uh, the administrator's always been in charge of that, and um, so I'm sure that you, you have plans to hire a company to do that to work on that. So. Um, but you're welcome. You're welcome to that. I don't need to uh, work on the policy. Yeah, I just think a lot of these practices as the township has grown, which obviously we're all aware has significantly grown in the last 20 years. A lot of our practices are very outdated, very um, archaic. So a lot of these things as far as empowering our staff and as we're discussing these changes, we do Maybe it isn't, hasn't been a big staff, but we've got a lot of stuff we're reorganizing here. So I think it's an opportunity to bring things current that um, have been needed to be done for quite some time. Well, the some people would argue that the township trustee uh, position is archaic. Um, and as you know, there, we can only do what the ORC allows us to do. That's correct. And townships vary greatly from uh, I mean, you can look in Delaware County from your smaller townships where the trustees are very hands-on uh, because there's not a whole lot of activity. It's a small township and there's not much in day-to-day -day operations versus uh, someone like us that um, is extremely busy and has a high volume of transactions. So we all are going to operate under the same code. However, uh, due to the size and the activity level, we're going to operate very different. So I can, I can speak for just a second here. A lot of what Andrew is proposing stems from, from the transition we had and um, was rooted in the notes. And then he took the, he took the, the, uh, the effort over and kind of drove with the group. Um, but it was all um, kind of vetted and, and discussed sporadically over meetings before his arrival where 
you know, we need to look and review our position descriptions as an aggregate. There's, there's, as I mentioned on the onset of the call, that the gray matter is excessive. Um, we're working right now with with Bill's department to redevelop um, the, the workload <clears throat> and kind of restructure who's doing what, um, provide more clear roles and breakdown of, of work. Um, solidify org charts, all that kind of stuff, and get get something that's uh, tangible and presentable and transferable so that we can all have conversation and dialogue around that. There's some draft work on that that we've exchanged so far, um, and we'll continue to work towards. We've met with Bill. I met with Bill and all the department heads um, about this type thing in the past. I spent most time with Bill because I think that's a real area for us to focus and, and provide some added support and allow him to do what he what he came here to do. Um, so I guess I, I'm not, my uh, issue is um, I feel like there needs to be a relationship so that, uh, for example, between myself and the administrator so that you have confidence in each other, trust in each other, you believe that the other one is competent in what they're doing. My issue is, is I can't get our administrator to return my call or to respond to an email, or if I ask a question, I have to ask it three times before I get a, an action or an answer. <clears throat> so if I guess if I had- Trustee Taranto, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna deny in that. In that relationship, um, I, I, would, I would feel better about it. Okay, well, we can, if there's concerns over over that, we can address um, we can address those and look at that objectively um, as a separate issue, um, just overall performance issue type thing. We can discuss that as a separate matter and well, session. Like or, been discussing this, and and I've really been left out of the loop, and, and that's frustrating for me. Well, I've discussed it with him as the acting administrator transitioning over my observations and the work I had done with the department heads, the work wasn't done. So there was no need to, to vet that or present it because there was nothing to present outside of notes and, and drafts on paper that I had developed. Ryan um, seems in the loop too. What? Ryan seems like he's pretty up on all this. Awesome. Well, I, I didn't share it with anybody. I ripped the pages out of my binder sitting in front of Andrew. Um, and, and the, the meeting, I think that you alluded to that happened in his office where there was some eavesdropping, um, that, that was the first two or three hour session that he and I had to talk through. Um, I think I encouraged him to buy a giant whiteboard. I don't know if he's done that yet. The purpose of the whiteboard would be that when we have physical, you know, we have on-site meetings, um, we can talk through and, and quickly draft and draw things. And then once we solidify them, uh, discussed with the team utilizing the smart board that zoning has. And Michelle thought that would be a great approach in our meetings when we're back in person to, uh, to, to visually go through the notes. And, and I think what, what is proposed today, um, allowing him to work on, continue to work on that type, type thing. I'm, I'm all for it. I understand if there's a concern over taking unilateral action and I would say that's fine. We should pause on that and vet, vet things through the board while we're going through a transition state. I don't disagree there, um, but but I wanted to, to just to voice up here that a lot of what he's doing is rooted in our conversation. I, I told him, you know, my top three, number one was clearly defined operational structure and checks and balances and that type of thing because, because they don't exist today and they have it. And so, you know, we need to get there. A lot of the, the fallout and the things that we're constrained by, again, are symptoms of, uh, or, you know, of the rapid growth. And now that growth is more, more stable and has been for some years, we have to dust off our, our thinking caps and get back to work to, to find out how we want to look when we grow up. We're grown up, so we've got to work backwards and do that. And I think that's all he's really working towards here. And I'm okay with that to continue. Again, I do agree if, if we're going to take formal action, then the board needs to be involved. And I'm, and I'm fine with that proposal you made, um, especially through transition. Transition is always tough from a communication standpoint because 
words that mean something to me mean something different to you. And so we need to pause and make sure we're aligned and understanding before we, before we take too many big steps forward. Um, but I, I, you know, I don't fault Andrew. I, this is stuff that, that we talked about. He's kind of making it his own now and talking with the team and, and refining what, what we discussed based on their feedback. And that's exactly what I would expect him to do in his role, <clears throat> managing day-to-day -day operations in the township. Some of the stuff he mentioned is based on our conversation, but also external parties that came in and have offered their feedback on what they've encountered, what their observations are, which I think is, is invaluable because they have perspective, right? They work with other entities. They do audits all the time. They've seen best in class um, and, and they can tell where we're great, where we're, we have opportunities and make those suggestions and we can act or not act accordingly. Um, certainly purchasing and you know, um, compliance are two areas where I think it's been made clear over the past six months, we, we have a lot to be desired and a lot of, of opportunity to improve. Um, aside from the, the statute requiring fiscal um, involvement, in, in, in that type of behavior, it really is an operational function. And the reason is, is that you know, operations are responsible for developing policies and procedures that are, that are self-checking and, and, and you know, have, have measures and sign-offs and that. It's the same reason we have to each individually sign things. It's no different than that. There's mandatory minimums at the statute level. And that's what he's working towards. It's not a undermining or a top secret uh, work activity, and if if we need to have more dialogue or or step back to realign, that's fine. We can have a, a meeting and and put that on the agenda and 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 vet that, or you know he can sit with you or whatever the the proper path is. But I don't want to lose focus of the intent here, um, and and detract from the good work that's been done. Some of the stuff that's you know keep in mind has been here just over two months and. And we're seeing that, you know, in the subsequent requests that are coming up here in the agenda, uh, there, there's a lot of good work that's been done. And, and it's ultimately about our fundamental responsibility. We're, we're putting the township in a far better spot through these checks and balances and approaches so everybody can feel good about the 12% of their tax dollars that come to the township. And so that's at heart of, of this effort. And so what's the point of, I guess, what's the point of this resolution? That that's a fair question. I, I mean, the, the, to me, um, if that's how you want the administrator to run the office, then this, it doesn't require a, a resolution. I, I didn't say that Deb. And, and, and that's where I said, I agree with you. If we're going to make, take formal action and make change, during a time of transition that we're in, then I think we need to pause and, and make sure we have alignment and, and that the board can be involved in that. I have no objection to your request in that regard. However, I, I do wanna, the, the point of my statement here is to say that I do believe he's doing a great job. And I think the intent is pure. If we need to redirect um, you know, communication or alignment or that kind of thing before moving forward, then we can we can step back to step forward and do that. But, um, I, you know, I, I'm not gonna, uh, you know, I, I don't think he's he's done anyone a disservice in my opinion. Um, you know, I know he spent a, a, a ton of time with the, with the staff. We've gone to walkthroughs and parks and concerns that are, that are surfaced. He's very engaged in that. He's got a lot of work you know, on his plate as do the department heads. And that's what this is about. How we eliminate the transactional stuff so that the leaders that we've empowered, you know, we're empowering the leaders that we've appointed to be leaders instead of managers. Right now, what we're seeing is that our leaders are burdened with management functions. There's a difference between the two. They don't have capacity to lead because they're burdened by transactional management. So we need to free up transactional management and allow them to truly lead and, and, Take charge of their departments. That's that's what this is rooted in, and um, and and this approach may not be the ideal approach, but the the let's not lose sight of the intent here. And if we need to find a different approach that works better for the collective board, then let's talk about that. Trustee, that's I mean that was the reason of putting it on the agenda, and just 
you know, for clarity's sake, what what I've said a couple of times was sort of the point of the resolution was we have some folks that need, we have some departments that need help. And I think there's a desire to move forward with getting that done. But at the same time, just there hasn't had the opportunity for some of the the job descriptions to be fully vetted in the way that I would like. So, um, and, you know, and again, this sort of is why I've brought this, this up a couple of different times. I mean, some of this is going to be what the board is comfortable with. I mean, what my experience with Genoa is, you know, they sort of manage things at the department level and administrator level until they wanted to make a hire. And then they'd come to the board and say, hey, board, we'd like you to hire this person at this rate and this position and whatnot. So, you know, this, I, my intent was sort of as an intermediate step is saying, hey, we recognize we're restructuring, but we can't stop all action while we're restructuring. You know, we need people to clean the bathrooms. Michelle wants somebody in place for the, the end of the year. And, you know, if we're, and we're, if we're gonna take, move Marianne over to Bill, her job duties need to be reassigned. So, you know, that was sort of the, the, the purpose behind that was saying, hey, and if, you know, if the board's not comfortable with the resolution, that's fine. It's just that I, the, the, the overall intent was that while we're doing the reorganization, there are things that still need to be done. And what, and I'm expressing a desire to move forward with those with those things so that they can be done while we're continuing the rest of the realignment. Because if we wait till we get the rest of the realignment done, I mean, we, we were going to Andrew, have to give, give us an example of what you're talking about. What's something that needs to be done that you think would be more efficient um, that this resolution would empower you to do um, so well, that we can have an example? Sure. I mean, the, the, the couple of things that I've mentioned several times now, the zoning in turn, sort of moving ahead with that pre-hiring and doing all that kind of stuff, you know, figuring out the zoning assistant position, you know, at getting that position description signed off on, getting it advertised, and maybe even get the interview started uh, before the next trustee meeting. The park, the park assistant custodian. I mean, Bill, Bill and I are still working so on with the an job. official position. That's enough. That I think for me anyway. But that that uh, of an example. But that that position description. I think what what I, what Trustee Taranto was saying, if, and I may be wrong here, is that if we're going to approve a position description, how do we approve it without board approval, right? So is that something you would look to get independent consensus from each of us on, and then we could formally approve it? Does that make sense what I'm saying? You and Michelle would work on it. You could email that out to each of us individually and vet any concerns we have. Sure. And, then, yeah, and then at the next meeting we could, you know, it almost goes under consent agenda at that point, right? I'm happy to do it that way. I mean, that's like I said, I, the main point was some things still need to be done and I wanted to be able to move forward while changing things. So if that's where the board, if that, that strikes me as a, as a fine idea. So I'm happy to do that because it, it accomplishes what i I, I think trustee Taranto's concern that I hear is she doesn't want to have, she doesn't want to be circumvented in a process and, and, and a responsibility that, that she feels the, you know, the board has a stake in. And, and like I said, in, in formal action matters, I tend to agree. So if you commit to that and we revisit at the next meeting uh, or, or subsequent meetings and, you know, she's expressed that she doesn't think she's aware and that we can handle separately. Um, but if you, can commit to, you know, ensuring you exhaust, you know, those avenues to, to keep her aligned. I'm fine with it. Um, uh, moving forward to allow you to do your job. Um, but I, I, I do want to make sure that we don't lose a board member in, in that process. Absolutely. And that was not at all my intent. And, you know, I know it I, wasn't. I'm just, that's her feeling, right? That matters oh, I, too. And I, and I offered to, to speak to Trustee Taranto before the meeting. We just didn't get to connect on this. And I'm happy to, to talk to her more at length about it after the meeting. But that, like I said, is, is a fine way of, of handling it. It's just, if when the zone, and again, I don't want it to, to come off like it's anybody's problem. Like for example, Michelle had a draft position ready to go for today. I just wanted the opportunity, like I said, to bounce it off our HR consultant and, um, and then sort of think about it in a, in a broader legal context and have a legal discussion if necessary with Chris or whomever. And it just, that was not able to happen last week despite me efforting in that direction a couple of times. So if, you know, if, if what you're, if just to restate what I think you're recommending is like using that as an example, let's say later this week, 
Michelle and I are comfortable with the way that the, the job description works, it would be circulating the job description with the board and sort of getting sort of a individual buy-in, like, hey, yeah, we want to move forward with this description as written. And then at the next board meeting, we could take whatever formal action would be necessary. It, it, it exactly what I was proposing. You've, you've gone through the process. You've talked to all parties. You've gotten the references, the professional buy-in or support or scrutiny, whatever you want to call it. And then the last step would be, here's, here's the steps we've taken to present to the board. Uh, and, you know, if you have any feedback, you know, let me know and I'll implement that, um, you know, with, you know, go round robin or whatever you want to call it so that when we get to the board meeting, there's no, there's, there's no wrinkles to, to, to drag the meeting out. Right. Sure. Now, I mean, just to clarify two points is that, I mean, ultimately I would have to have some, the responsibility in this because otherwise it sort of becomes a like I can be seeking the board members input and impressions on it but I can't we can't sort of kick it to like you sort of said a round robin email of making the decision no that's front. illegal that word right, right. was terribly yeah. chosen because that's actually statute states that specifically and not, I know not and I, I just want to be an open meeting definitely not right. trying to do that I'm, no, I'm simply I, suggesting I, that the dialogue start before the meeting I knew that you weren't I just wanted to clarify that you know, that fact. And then I just wanted to clarify if this is the, the, the avenue, which again is completely fine with me, I think it's, it works fine, is I just want to be sure that we're still comfortable with, it, you know, once I feel like I, we've got sufficient input or board input or whatever, like if we want to post the zoning inspector or parks laborer or whatever we're calling the parks position, that we can do that prior to the next meeting or were you wanting to just put every hiring on hold till the next meeting? Well, I don't think you're hiring, you're soliciting what? interest, right? Correct, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. fine with that because the hiring has has to be approved by the board. And I'm sure. fine with that. I don't think we need a resolution to for you to do your job. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think I, you've got consensus on a non-resolution that you presented though is what I'm hearing, Andrew. So it, it's on the record and hopefully that makes sense. Thank you, sir. So Andrew, are you comfortable then moving forward without this resolution? Yeah, I, again, you know, I this is, and I, and I hate to sort of keep blaming stuff like this, but I mean, this is sort of the figuring each other out and figuring out how, how the process wants to work. So the reason just to give a little bit more, and I don't, want this to sound negative at all but the reason I sort of wanted it a little bit more in writing is just to, to make sure there wasn't a sort of a question down the road of like are you doing what you were authorized to do so as long as everyone feels like you know my the process of hey you know as we're refining these job descriptions and whatnot solicit the input at some point we can put this out for um, interest and then come to the board for hiring action as long as we I think, and I think we're locked in on that, then I'm, I'm fine with it. But I just, that was the, the point. I didn't want any later misunderstanding. So, but I, I think we're good. So, and I know that has come up in the past as far as the administrator and your duties and uh, what you, know, you have in your role. So being that that was a question in the past, you're showing, looking for clarity to show as far as what you have approval for and what you don't to move forward with some of these, these items, correct? Correct. And that's, you know, again, I, I don't, I, there may have been a feeling that was trying to be hidden, but it was not trying to be hidden. Otherwise, I wouldn't have put it on the agenda and, you know, suggested a, a particular course of action. I wanted the board to to tell me how they wanted to proceed. And I feel like I, I got that. And as long as everyone's on board, I, I can, I think I have sufficient direction to move forward. Thanks, yeah. Andrew. And as I said earlier, we have a lot of practices that are outdated. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done and I've seen a, a lot of progress and a lot of positive results here of late. And some of those comments, I don't think that made it earlier were fair. Uh, if you have an issue with an employee or any staff, you can always call an executive session. Uh, but I would hope that um, as far as our conduct and the manner taken would um, be taken the pro in the proper, the proper manner as far as, um, you know, 
identifying any issues or concerns. So I've always found Administrator King to be very responsive and appreciate all his hard work and everything that he's done to get us to this place. And I know we're on, we're on the right track. All right, so I think we're good to go moving forward with staff positions. Everyone's clear? Yes. All right, that takes us to our old uh, old business. First, I got a our, quick question here, Ryan. Are we sure. gonna talk through the dude work and all of the, is that tabled? Uh, the, the dude work was in the consent agenda, but there's an item there's something within the dude work that you wanted to. Yeah, I did. I did want to. I did want to. I was hoping Andrew would bring that up. I, it's it's so important of a topic. I, you know, this is part of the concern over consent agenda. I, I do think Andrew, if I could offer some advice with the administrative report, even sure. if it's in the consent agenda, I think um, for a significant change in approach, it would make sense to share with the with the community a a, a one minute summary of what work you've done so that it doesn't feel like um, that it's it's gone unnoticed or that it's um, you know we're just we're just hitting hitting a rubber stamp so just my you know my, my two cents is that we're implementing a workload management software package um, that that includes you know uh, uh, real accountability for property it's going to redefine the inventory process we have, asset management process we have, workload management and purchasing processes by allowing everything to be systemically and electronically tracked. I think that's critical for our residents to know that we're taking that step to bring us into a, a, a best in class, um, you know, uh, time and, and type of operation. And, um, you know, I spoke with the county engineer's office last week. They're pleased with it. They they said it's been working real well uh, from what they've heard, and um, you know all of this again mitigates the burden of using Excel sheets and pieces of paper and scraps and whatever to try and keep track of of legitimate workloads, and it puts it all in a user interface that's that's top notch. We have support for it's affordable. And uh, it, it's really going to enable and empower our team to do their job more effectively, focus on their job and not this, uh, you know, transactional type stuff. So, um, and, and with the CBiz change uh, that that uh, Mr. King worked on and got got through uh, the calls and the all the different crossing of T's and dotting of I's to move that forward, we've got multiple software packages between departments and between operations and within the township that are all um, trying to accomplish the same thing, but they don't speak to each other and, and they're not uh, interconnected. So all of this work that he's been doing and, and exhausting himself to, to get done with the group, and they've all been doing it for years, is to put us into a better place. Um, and, and I think our residents need to know that, and I think they'd be very proud of it. Um, and I'd like to propose once we get to that point um, that we do a, a demonstration at one of the meetings. It's brief, but it, it shows the, the Stone Age from the modern age and, and, and that they can see that their tax dollar investment was, was well managed. And, um, and I think our team, it, it's never easy to change, but I think in the end, once this is implemented, they're gonna be ecstatic and they're really gonna appreciate what it allows them to do. So I, I did want to pause and say I couldn't be more, you know, two months on the job. Um, and, and I think we all need to keep that in mind. It's going to take continued alignment and realignment. If you look at the past and the things that have happened at the township and some of the, the personalities that have had to navigate through and, and that type thing, it's understandable um, that, that people have concerns. It's understandable that they have uh, naturally go to a, a place of being ostracized or whatever. But, um, you know, you've been on the job two months. And I think what you've presented to the board and accomplished so far is commendable. Um, I think that you've proven yourself to, to be a hard worker. And uh, I, I really appreciate it. I'm, I'm really proud of what you've accomplished so far and, and what it will do to help our township. So I wanted to publicly state that. 
Well, thank you, trustee. I think you can do my administrative report every meeting. So I know I appreciate that. And, and I would just, um, you know, I, and I know I shared this internally with the trustees. I, I think you're, I appreciate the input and I certainly agree with you. I mean, obviously I'm sort of heading that direction, but I, I, you know, the upgrades that our software system, you know, one of the things that, as you indicated, there's a lot of things that's invisible to the residents and, um, you know, the, the township has sort of been making do with making things work. So, you know, it's been an opportunity to sort of look at these things and say, hey, can we do it better? Can we eliminate some of these manual processes? Can we eliminate some of these errors? Can we eliminate some of these repetitive tasks? And I think, as you indicated, both the CBIZ uh, changes and then with the DUDE solutions, I think um, both of those are going to help internally. And I think I mentioned this at the last meeting when we talked about the dude solutions um but i know that um i talked to them a little bit more and i, I think that the chair is going to bring up the the website at some point here um but there's sort of an opportunity to integrate the dude solutions with the our gis stuff that we have and the website so that the residents can because i mean one of the things that i think we all get is hey is this a hey this this trail isn't mowed or hey there's something wrong with this pond or whatever and you know, there'll be the opportunity for the, re the, we the residents to go to the website and potentially sort of create yeah, their workload, own work right? order. Yep. yep. So, you know, I think, I think there's some great opportunities there and, uh, and then, you know, it'll allow us to do some other things. I think, you know, one of the discussions that um, I had a while ago, and I, I think we're going to have soon again with the engineer's office is coming up with the roads master plan. So being able to, to keep track of those roads and repairs and whatnot, and sort of know what, what's coming up will allow us to do a better capital management. And, you know, a big thing I know that uh, Bill's excited about is we're gonna do essentially that capital assessment of all the, the parks properties and whatnot. So we'll be in a position to better plan our future expenses instead of just, you know, and we've again had this happen since I've been here where something shows up and it's a large expense that no one had really planned for in the past. And, and now it's here and the day has arrived. So the, the software will, will be there to sort of help us do that. So. I appreciate the acknowledgement and I'm looking forward to bringing this stuff online and, and it's been a team effort. You know, I, I, Mr. Cowan has been a, been a supporter of this and been helpful and, and uh, I couldn't do it without folks like Bill being willing to help. It's a shift to proactive management. That's the key. And, and I would argue one thing, it's not invisible to residents. They just don't know how to define what they do see and what they feel. And, Fair Fair and we they get, um, when we get capacity, they get yield and benefit and, and um, responsiveness and all those things that, that, that they do notice. And so I would say that this is all meaningful to them for those reasons. All right, well, I think that takes us uh, to old business. We had the uh, tabled item from last meeting regarding Orange Road phase two. Okay, um, I, I wanted to see if um, Fiscal Officer Kraft, if you've had time to uh, rework that <clears throat> revenue and expense projection and, and going, uh, you know, I know there were a couple of things you were going to change based on the way our funding was scattered over time and now it's more consolidated. Is that something that ready to go yet or? Yeah, I just got to do one final review of it, and then I think it'll be ready. So I uh, cleaned it up last week. Um, I wanted to take a, a step away and then come back and just make sure I didn't miss anything. So I can get that out this week. Okay. And the um, the other thing with that, I, I did sit down with uh, our, our county engineer, um, both Chris Bowserman and, and uh, Rob Riley, I really appreciated that they took time to, to a couple hours to meet with myself. I asked um, them to meet to discuss this and Bob Lamb uh, helped facilitate that meeting. I know he's taking um, a lot of effort and time to help our township and working with uh, both Michelle and different people. Um, but the reason is, you know, it, it, in the election period, I had started dialogue with them knowing that uh, the roads would be a potential concern. I, I know the predecessor uh, in the fiscal department had had voiced voiced this, and I know he tried to voice more, um, but the the dynamic at the time was prohibitive to that. Um, and so, 
um, I was aware of the challenges and had talked about um, the county's appetite to, to help us with our roads or to, to look at roads that probably have outgrown their township roots. Um, and I know I, I brought that up randomly at a meeting and kind of surprised a few people that I, that I surfaced that as, as something I was looking at. But, you know, I don't know that the engineer department itself um, has, you know, much plan to take on uh, additional cost. Um, they've helped us with the plans as statute requires and done that, that heavy lifting. But regarding this topic and the tabled item here, I do think, um, you know, in speaking with Bob Moore, um, I've asked for a, 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 another meeting and he agreed to facilitate that uh, where we're gonna sit down with um, Mr. Fromer and, um, and talk about potential options with our, our pending projects. Um, and, and really the, the simple reason is that we asked the engineer to, to create um, roads projects and take on work on our behalf that we can't afford. And so we need to look at that as partners with the county and, and our shared vision and increased partnership that, that we both invested in. Look at the future revenue generation with some of the pending projects from a development standpoint um, and really vet you know, the appetite for assistance. And I know with the grant writer coming in, I would hope we would look at roads as a priority uh, I know there's some existing grants on roads that are out there, but they're, they're, they're a lot, they, they're a lot of, of money, but there's still a drop in the bucket collectively when we look at our total uh, projected expenses. Um, I do think with Orange Road, we have to look at time and be mindful of that. The second phase is critical, the accidents and um, you know, what we have in a, you know, going in that section. Um, and then with phase three, the underpass, that's, that's, that's going to take some time with that expense. But then on the back end, we have Bell Canyon coming. And that's where I have a lot more concern, and especially after meeting with the engineer's office and, and explaining the road conditions to me um, and some of the phases that aren't, aren't sustainable and have, you know, uh, potential uh, uh, hazards there that develop if we, if we leave them. Um, so... I just want to reiterate that, um, you know, I think, I think that, you know, we have to look at this from a, from a sustainability standpoint on the expense side. I'm interested to see the new projections once, once they're finalized. Um, I don't know how the other board members feel about this phase two, uh, but I, I think it's important for us to, 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 to get it done. Um, but, but I would like to meet with Mr. Frommer and, um, get feedback from him as far as what the future holds and ask that the board um, allow me to do that in good faith and we'll convey that back and communicate that um, to, to, to the collective board upon completion there. Uh, Trustee Grumbles, do you have an idea of when you'll be meeting again? Yeah, it, it, should, be, it should be this week. It'll be before the next board meeting. And then we would also have the projections uh, for next meeting as well. Yes, you will. Right, well, I'm, I'm fine with that. Okay. I mean, I think our levy that we have now is more of a maintenance type focused levy. We don't really have the, 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 the revenue generation that would be required to continue this infrastructure path. And that was really the focus of this increase in economic development, right? So that we that we go about it the right way and we get yield from it. And I know Bob has some work um, planned to present in talking with him that would ensure the township is, is taken care of in that regard with future development. And I think the board's really going to like that um, and our residents will be proud of it too. But we have a lot of things going on in our township and, so, and speaking with residents some of the roadways, Blue Holly, Walker Woods, et cetera, that you know, folks are, are experiencing um, potential you know, with speeding and different hazards and things like, so you just need to take a collective look at, at goals and calibrate that with revenue generation and, and get a consensus on you know, how, we wanna, how we wanna move forward here. That's all I have to say.
Well, I look forward to uh, hearing the report the next at the next meeting and how things uh, uh, go with Mr. Frommer. Thank you. Uh, our next item was our Rumkey contract. Uh, Mr. King, if you want to cover that. Certainly. So um, this is just a renewal of the Rumpke contract with Liberty and Genoa, which I think started, I can't remember, has been renewed a couple times when I was at the prosecutor, at least once while I was at the prosecutor's office. So uh, just for general information, Liberty and Genoa had already approved the renewal and then when I sent this to Chris for his blessing, there was an issue or two that he identified and wanted to get worked out. And to be honest with you, I don't remember right off the top of my head what that was. It was it was fairly down in the weeds with, with legal stuff. And I know there was a couple meetings with the attorneys and Rumpke and whatnot. And this was the product of that. So, um, you know, legal counsel's fine. And I think my understanding is Liberty and Genoa will probably pass the, the the new resolution just to make sure everybody's in uh, in uh, step with each other. So, you know, it should be what what I was not here obviously for the bidding and all that kind of stuff. So this is just moving forward with the contract that with Rumkey that was the low and best bidder from earlier in the year. Hey, Andrew, quick question. Yes, Do you know if we still have to have that $10,000 um, uh, set aside? We, we have an account with just $10,000 in it because of this. And I've been told it's because of the rum key contract. Do you know if we need to keep that set aside there as part of the I, new contract? Uh, we can ask Chris that. I, I honestly do not know. Okay. I don't remember that from working on it in the past. I mean, just... Mark Fowler and Paul Wise, even though Mark was Orange's counsel and Paul was obviously administrator of Genoa, they, for some reason, were just the two that did most of the lifting on this. So I just don't remember that level of detail. So we'll, we'll, we'll track it down and figure it out. I've got an email from Paul about it. I'll send you. I just didn't know if it was still a requirement in the current contract or with the ask. proposed contract. Yeah, I'll send you what Paul had originally sent me. Okay, great. All right, I make a motion to approve resolution 20-262 to renew the contract for the collection, transfer, and disposal of solid waste with Rumkey of Ohio. Second. Mr. Rubbers? Yes. Mr. Rumbles? Yes. Ms. Taranto? Yes. Did we lose Trustee Torano? Yes, I said yes. Oh, okay, sorry, I didn't hear you. Okay, that takes us to our final item for on today's agenda. That is the uh, township website, which we've discussed at the last two meetings. The proposal was in the backup. Uh, we're ready to move forward. So. Any questions, anything in regards to moving forward with Guide Studio and the redesign of the website? Is there a yearly fee on that after uh, the initial payment? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. What was your question? Is there a yearly fee after? The no, we, no we, will, we will own the website. If everyone's okay to move forward, there was a resolution. It looks like uh, it didn't make it into the into the template. However, I emailed it to everyone. I can read the full resolution as well. But just simply um, is approving us to move forward with Guide Studio. Is there a second? All right. So 
Yeah, I'll, wanna... I'll make I'll make the motion I'll make the motion to approve resolution two zero dash two six three, whereas the board town the board desires to redesign the Orange Township website. Now, therefore, be it resolved one, the board hereby approves the statement of work from guide and authorizes the chair to execute the agreement. Two, all formal actions of the board concerning and relating to the passage of this resolution were adopted in the open meeting of the board, and all deliberations of the board and any of its communities that result in such formal action were meetings open to the public in compliance with all legal requirements, including RC 121.22. Three, this resolution shall be in full force and effect immediately upon adoption. Second. Mr. Rivers? Yes. Mr. Rebels? Yes. Ms. Taranto? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Thank you. All right. I, I believe that covers all for uh, today's agenda. Do we have any anything else anyone would like to add? Will the uh, July, me July meeting be on Zoom? Um, at this point, uh, yes, with where things, the current state of things, where things are at, I think uh, um, we'll continue with our current practices and we'll obviously be reassessing as we go. Um, but with the recent news, um, it's kind of right now, it's the status quo is staying put. Great, thank you. Well, I'd just like to wish everyone a, a happy 4th of July. Obviously, this holiday is uh, much different from the usual, but um, I hope everyone has a, a safe and healthy 4th of July and gets to uh, enjoy some time off. Thank you for that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. You too. Thank you all. All right. Have with that, I'll make the motion to adjourn. Second. Mr. Rivers? Yes. Mr. Grumbles? Yes. Ms. Taranto? Yes. Thank you. Have a, have a great week. Bye-bye.